Right, that will come through in a moment. So I just really just wanted to start out by saying um, hello to you all. It's great to see you here today. I'm uh, Julia Wood and I run the uh, the Q Community Special Interest Group in Improving Joy of Work, Joy in Work. And that's probably one of the ways most of you have kind of heard about this event. But before we get started, if you are not a Q member, um, I would definitely recommend you consider joining. And I will put instructions in the in the chat, um, which takes you to a link where you can find out what Q is and, and why it's worth being a Q member. So um, I'm now going to hand over to Carrie Briddle, who will share her Joy and Work story. Uh, it's going to be an absolutely fantastic presentation and story today, uh, which I'm sure will put you in the Christmas spirit if you're not if you're not there already. So um, I'll let Carrie do her own introduction. Uh, Carrie. Thanks, Julia. Thank you so much um, for having me today and warm welcome to everybody who is um, with us live for this session on Joy and Work. Hello, my name is Carrie Biddle. Um, I have put myself as the former director of ELVES from the Royal Cornwall Hospital Trust in uh, Cornwall and I will describe a bit more about that in a moment. If people could pop themselves on mute so that we get good quality sound, that would be fabulous for the recording. Thank you. But please do, there'll be times for interaction and would welcome you um, joining in and sharing your own experiences as well. Um, my son told his teacher that his mummy was a speech and language terrorist. I promise you I am not a terrorist. I come in peace and I come with joy this uh, Tuesday lunchtime, but I am a speech therapist by professional background and I now work for Health Education England in the southwest as the regional head of AHPs. So today we're going to take you through a joyful um, adventure of my own experience of spreading joy at work and how it resonated with others and some of my top tips and strategies for people who may be just coming to this and um, curious to find out more. So next slide please Julia. So first things first, um, if you can tap again, hopefully it'll come through. There's a bit missing on that slide, so I might put, there we go. So how would you describe your experience of joy and work? So we're going to use the Mad Tea Party, which is one of the engagement tools from Liberating Structures. So what I want you to do is have a look at the three choices in front of you. And then I'm going to give you a countdown and ask you in the chat box to put one, two or three uh, when I give you the ready, set, go. Um, so in terms of your own experience of using or being involved in joy at work, are you elfing all the way? Are you an elf for all seasons? Are you here you giving me the show me the jingle? I'm glitter ready, wanting to find out how to become more joyful at work. Or are you in the camp, which lots of people are when I used to go out and do joy at work sessions that would say they are three words that do not belong together and should not be used in the same sentence. I'm um, going to have to do some conversion and influencing here because I don't know how they go together. So we're going to have 30 seconds. I've got my countdown on. So have a think about where you are. Are you elfing all the way? Are you ready to show me the jingle glitter ready or are joy and work three words that don't belong together. When you are ready, I would like you to pop your answer one, two or three in the chat box. And when I say go, I want you to press the hit button so we find out where everyone is today. So ready, set, hit your buttons, folks. Tell us where you are today. Are you one, two or three? OK. Oh, fabulous. So we've got some elves amongst us. We've got some people that need to be converted. Quite a few that are here to, to discover more about joy and work. Fantastic. Brilliant. OK, so um, next slide, please, Julia. So the next uh, one that I want you to think about is. Um, oh, not sure. What's, this is probably me. Apologies, Julia. My slides are playing. Funny. Here we go. So. Can you describe a joyful memory at home or work? One of my top tips for you if you're starting to recognise and notice joy around you is to keep a joy journal. So think about a time that's been joyful to you at home or at work. 
What do you see when you're thinking about it? What did you smell? What do you hear? What do you taste? What are those things that evoke joyful memories for you as an individual in your home life or in your work life? OK, so again, I've got my timer on. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to have a think. And then I want you to just pop a comment, but not send it until I say go of what it is. What are the joyful times for you? So for me in my joy journal, there was blowing out birthday candles. That smell evokes a really joyful moment of have, being able to make a wish for something and having everyone there to celebrate with you. Um, it's the smell of coffee brewing in the staff room where people are getting together to have a nice cup of coffee together over a tea meeting. It's my son's smile when he comes back having bought a double scoop ice cream with sprinkles and a chocolate flake where he was given money to buy one ice cream, one scoop, no topping, but took the initiative to treat himself. So what is it that brings you a joyful moment? So on the count of three, if you're ready to post your answers, three, two, one, post. What is it that brings you joy? Celebrating success, Christmas with family, celebrating together, warmth and kindness, smiles and food, laughter, dad jokes, baking bread, mulled wine, the dog that welcomes you. Yep putting up the Christmas tree, family members, granddaughters, listening to music, Christmas lights. Yeah, fantastic. Excellent. So there are moments for joy and to notice joy all around you. And one of the top tips for me in bringing um, on your elf self is that you think about where are those opportunities and moments in your day. Next slide, please, Julia. So my background to Joy and Work started back in 2017. I was the therapy governance and quality lead at Royal Cornwall Hospitals for um, across working across physio, speech therapy, OT, dietetics and podiatry. And we had just done a score survey of workplace culture, which looked at different cultures in your workplace. It looked at your learning culture, your risk culture, your teamwork, your leadership, burnout in self and burnout in team. And at the end of it, um, having completed the survey, I debriefed the staff first about this is what the results said. How does this re resonate with you and what's important? And do you want support from the senior team to take action on? And one of the things that really came through was people were lacking joy. They were lacking um, a real joy. They, they, they felt it was a hard slog. The things that they thought that would that would be great, they saw as a luxury and didn't see as part of their daily work. And so we were trying to find ways to improve their satisfaction at work and and our overall productivity, our wellness and workforce retention. It so happened it came out the same time as the IHA published their Improving Joy in Work white paper. And what I really liked about this is that it talked about the absolute evidence and base and well documentation about burnout. And actually, when you flipped it as a coin on its head, the same issues that drive burnout also diminish joy in work. And if we could find ways to turn that over, if we could improve our joy in work, we could probably reduce our burnout and increase our staff retention, um, job satisfaction and productivity, et cetera, et cetera. So really along those lines that happy, joyous staff stay in work and support safer, sustainable delivery of care and services. So this was my starting point. And if you've not seen the white paper, it's worth having a look at it. It's kind of I like them because they're a bit like a recipe card. It tells you the ingredients you need and then it gives you the steps to do to try and do something different. And that's what I use to start looking at joy in work. Next slide, please, Julia. So one of the key things it does is ask staff what matters to you, and it takes a person centred approach, but it requires a commitment to change from everyone taking a shared responsibility for improving joy at work. And what I really liked about it was that it focused on the good and the things that go well using appreciative inquiry. Now, my previous clinical role um, before I went into governance was I was a specialist speech language therapist working in cancer and, and specialist palliative care. 
And actually, when I started reading more about appreciative inquiry, I'd been doing this for years in my clinical practice. And it was something I did where people would say, you know, I've been told uh, there's no cure. I'm, I'm basically wait. I literally go to people's houses and they'd be waiting in bed thinking it is today the day I'm going to die. And I'd be like, you're not dead yet. You've got living to be done. What's important to you and what's going to make a difference to the quality of your days that you have left? And so this was something that I felt quite able to translate into a skill I'd used with patients into something I could use with staff. Next slide, please, Julia. So appreciative inquiry really focuses on strengths and looks beyond the present to what is possible. And it's a technique that's been used in countries and communities that have been decimated by civil war, tsunamis, all sorts of awful atrocities where they're left with nothing. And all they've got is their hope for the future. And it uses that to look at where are their opportunities, what are their strengths, what are in, what's important to them to start from here and go forwards. Often what we've done when we've gone to staff to try and look at things, and my previous experience of doing things like listening into action, was we asked staff all the things that weren't working. What's not great? What would you like to be better? And they would dump and jump in the whinge pit, basically, and offload all the things that weren't right, didn't like. They've said it, nothing happens. They've said it, nothing happens. But then they would park it at that, you know, with the managers or the senior team to do something about it. And actually, instead of going over and ending back where we are today and people scratching their heads, appreciative inquiry allows us to be real about where we are today, but to look forward. What is the future that I want to be part of and what's my part in taking us there? So next slide, please. I started going out and doing joint work sessions around therapies and it soon spread to other areas saying, can you come and help us? Uh, we hear that you're an elf for all seasons. I called myself the director of elves in the trust, put myself on the board, a discretionary effort. And um, with a £50 investment from my uh, head of OD, had said, give me some time and see what I can do. So what we did was we started asking some questions. So I'm asking you this question now. So when we are at our best at work, what does that look like? So think about what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste when you are at your best at work with your colleagues. So that was the first question I would ask people. Next slide. The next question I would ask is, so what do we need from each other to be at our best? Because similar to when you look at burnout and you look at burnout in self and burnout in team, you need to look at what we need from ourselves as individuals and what we need from each other when we work together to be at our best and be joyful at work. And the things that I found was regardless of whether I was talking to frontline clinicians, finance colleagues, admin colleagues, psychiatrists, doctors, nurses, porters, whoever I spoke to, the responses were invariably the same. I used flip charts because this was pre-COVID and I would take a photo of all the flip charts and you could literally line them up and you would see the same things come through. Next slide, please, Julia. So what people talked about was coping, positivity, smiling, calm, engaged, motivated, humour, seeing it, feeling it, sparkling, glowing, being on it, achieving, looking forward to challenges, being excited, being content, feeling in control, being flexible, able to look up, accommodating of others. These are the things what people felt when we were our best it looked like. Next slide, please. And what do we need from each other? People talked about our values, shared values, openness, honesty, energy, reinforcement, motivational feedback, flexibility. These were really important attributes that supported people to bring their best self to work, that they felt they could support each other. And actually, when you look at the things that we talk about, when we talk about our NHS values, our organisational values, our own values should align to them if we are going to have a satisfactory, um, you know, employment and enjoy what we're doing when we're at work. Please, can you have the next slide? Thank you. So appreciative inquiry is a really positive strategy. 
um, to think about if you're going to start doing joy at work and the power of language and positive framing really matters. It's about being mindful of the questions you ask and directing those questions towards strengths and positive outcomes. So the person that sets the questions, sets the direction and has the power of the change agent in this opportunity. So questions are uh, like what makes for a good day for you at work? What makes you proud to be here? When we're at our best, what does that look like? What motivates you to be doing the work you do now? What do you consider to be the indicators that you are doing an excellent job? So starting to get people to think about what's important to them and what they value and recognise in the work and the way in which they're doing their work. An appreciative inquiry is often found is what's described as the flip. So it, sometimes I would go into sessions and people were used to coming and talking about all the things that didn't work and their frustrations. So what I would do is flip it on its head and say, OK, so if that's what it looks like on a bad day or that's not working for you. How do you flip it? Can I just check everyone can see the slides? I think there's some people having some issues with the slides. So we're on slide um, 11 of 13 at the moment. Great, we have got some slides. A couple of people are having trouble. So the words we use define our perspective and set our direction. And so it's really important to hear people, to listen to what they say and to help them think about where they want to go next. Next slide, please. So where do you start? So my top tips are harness your superpowers. So you will see in some of these human beings. I am a keen sketch nater as well. Um, I can't draw, but I can draw orange baked bean people. And beans are a real leveller because human beings make us all on an equal pegging, depending on where we are. And we know that there's lots of traditional hierarchy in the NHS. So I always use human beings to convey messages to um, be clear that we're putting people first and people before role and status. So think about what are your superpowers? What are your gifts that you can share, your strengths that you have as a person in your values, in your behaviours that you can share with others? And someone sent me this picture in the middle and said, this is what I see when I, when I interact with you. Think about how your light changes the world. So one light can light up a room. It will have impact. It's like the stone and the ripple effect. You have to be the elf. You have to bring joy to receive joy. So it's really important that you are thinking about how you are role modelling what it's like to be joyful at work. And embrace your inner elf. You want it to be fun. People want to have a smile. They want to joke. They want to have a good time when they're at work, despite the fact that it's a hard slog and there's lots to be done. How we approach it is up to us. Next slide, please. So some of the things, again, that I would use in the joint work sessions would be, like I say, um, to focus on to be lists, to do lists and to da lists. So um, a to be list is really focusing back in on that. What do we need from each other to bring our be our best at work? So instead of thinking about the tasks to be done, thinking about the approach in which we're going to take to do the work. Actually, if we are going to positively flip our stressful day to do lists, if it's hard, what are we going to do to balance that out at the end of the day? So what is your stressful day to do list? What are the actions you're doing to look after yourself so that you are making sure you're energised, you're well rested and you're able to come to work? And then there's a uh, one page here, which is your good day, bad day. So you encourage people to write down on their best day what's happened, what are they doing, who are they with, what makes it a great day at work. And then on a bad day, what's what what are you seeing, what are you feeling, what's going on when you have really bad days and what are the little actions you could take to flip more bad days into good days. So again, using that appreciative inquiry flip to turn things over. Other times I'd use for the frustration room 101. So again, encourage people to, to come in, put all their frustrations up and we go through them and say, OK, you bring this frustration forward, describe it to me. Let's think about how we flip it and let's put the frustration into room 101 and let's agree a positive action that you want to take moving forward that you're going to commit to. 
So really simple actions that can help people use appreciative inquiry to increase their joy at work. Next slide, please. So here we go. This is one of the um, sketch notes. So this is just my one page summary of a book by Mike Robbins, which is about how to bring your whole self to work. And one of the things he picked up on, which some of you mentioned in your joyful moments at the beginning, is around appreciation. So it takes nothing to show appreciation and we can appreciate people, the work they do, the actions they take every single day. Try it. See if you can find moments for appreciation to say it, see it, write it and share it five times in a day. You will be amazed at the response you get back from people if you notice their behaviours, their values, the way they are behaving and sharing that back with them. Because what we tend to do is focus on recognition and results. And often, despite all the hard work and the time and the commitment people have put in, we don't often get the results we want in the time or at the pace that we want to see them. And we lose people's motivation and then recognising that we know they're trying their best with the time resources available to them to do things. It also, once you start showing appreciation in that sense, you start to see the ripple effect that they notice it and they start to notice it in other people. So it's that joyful act that keeps on giving and gets passed forwards. It can be an email, it can be a messaging, it can be externally via social media. We know lots of organisations have got involved in muggings where you give a mug of appreciation. We've got things like learning from excellence, so actual systems set up where you can feed it in and we can learn together and, that, and, and appreciate what it is that we think is going well. Next slide, please. So back to my 2017, 2018, doing joy at work sessions. And again, I was reviewing what was really important from our school survey with our therapy colleagues. And the biggest currency of value for them was time. Not enough time to do this, too much time wasted on that. The wrong people doing the wrong things. And if only we did this, then we would have that. I'd love to do supervision. Where's the time for it? We don't have a job plan. Where's my time to do my team development? Those things were really, really important. So I'm a big Twitter fan. I took to Twitter and I found 15 seconds, 30 minutes. And they were exactly what I was looking for. I needed something that needed no training, no money, just to enable staff to find time to do things that were important for them within their working day. And it not be whole days, it be little moments of time that were gonna make a difference. And so this was my um, sketch note for 15S 30M that I used as my poster to go out and encourage people to join me. So it encourages you to become your own superhero, to commit to taking action. Often the actions of one impacts on the actions of another. I used to talk a lot about sausage machines for some reason. So this was my frustration to joy sausage machine at the bottom where I'd invite people into a 50 minute session. They would do frustration room 101. We'd flip things around. They would come out with a mission statement of a small change they were going to take that would lead to a different outcome next time. The idea being that joy is created by the sum of all the small actions together. So the way I sold it was your action, your mission is a piece of confetti. One piece of confetti on its own is not going to have an impact. But if you share it with others and we can encourage everybody to make one small change, then we have an absolute wonderful abundance of joy and confetti being thrown that other people will notice and people will be attracted to because it's sparkly and it makes us feel good and they'll want to join in. People would launch their missions. Once they'd done them, they'd let me know. I would go and give them a cog, which is what they do in this movement, to recognise that they had taken action as a 15S 30M superhero. And in presenting that cog, they would um, often then go on to launch more missions, but it would be a outward kind of connectivity of growing the network. Next slide, please. So how does it work? So people say, what's the magic in 15S 30M? And it reminded me of um, work by Paul McGee, who's the sumo guy. So if you don't know Paul McGee, a great short book to read. 
people used to say to me, oh, you're you're really sumo. And I think, God, I need to lose some weight. This is really not the look I'm going for here, people. But they were like, no, 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 sumo, guys. So sumo stands for shut up and move on. And it's really about how you take a positive, proactive approach to, to what you're doing and taking control back of the way in which you work and you lead your life. And basically what it does is 15S30M encourages us to take actions that respond to an event and not react to an outcome. So often where we find things happen, you see, I found myself having the same conversations, repetitive bit of a moan first whinge pit times where oh we knew that was going to happen they did that this happened last time and all we would do was react to an outcome and so you have to shift that r from reacting to responding and move it to the other side of the equals so if you respond to the event you have a better opportunity to shape a different outcome the next time something happened and that's what you offer in 15s 30m and I'd say to people, try it, go away, try it and see what you did. And it worked. So they kept doing it and they kept finding other ways that they could make it work. Next slide, please. So I started doing joint work. I then started doing 15S30M workshops. Um, again, because it didn't need training, word of mouth, people found out I was out cogging. So they would contact me and I would go out on a Tuesday and a Thursday around the hospital sites. Um, delivering the cogs people started doing it in teams they started doing it across their departments and cogging became a really important part of sharing the movement because it was that visible piece where i would show up we'd celebrate their success and they would share often with their colleagues what they did and their colleagues would go oh i could do that. i've got loads of things that i could make frustration turn into positive but brilliant do it and i'll come back and we'll do more cogging so we ended up going out and about but you know and people would stop me at the park and ride bus saying oh you need to come on your next cogging round we, we've got some that need cogs so it was a wonderful way of creating and building a social movement next slide please as word spread there was opportunity so 15s 30m and join work in this sense very much sits on a spectrum between od um uh, and kind of creating joy and workforce retention and quality improvement. So it's a foot in the door to quality improvement. And so I started um, attending uh, the trainee assistant practitioner program and we used it as a getting on the QI ladder approach. They were brilliant. They were absolutely fantastic at finding the small things that would make a big difference to the teams they were working in and getting their cogs and, and understanding the process behind it. Uh, I would also go out to uh, preceptorship. So I went out on the preceptorship and did joy at work and 15S30M. Next slide, please. I would go to health and wellbeing events. So I went to our maternity health and wellbeing event back in 2018. And again, just did really simple 15S30M approaches and they were off. They knew exactly what they needed to do. They had all sorts of things. And these are things that don't require a business plan. They don't require funding. You literally, within the next day, within the next week, people were coming back. I've done, my, I've created my mission. I've taken my action. Can I have my cog? So this is immediate return on thought, intent and ideas into action that people would then feel that they were achieving, they were adding joy and they were doing something positive that would make a difference in their workplace. Next slide, please. Went to um, admin, admin colleagues were all over it. They are absolute superheroes in abundance. Um, lots of people started making jewellery out of it. They wanted to make necklaces and out of their cogs and um, amazing. And in the middle here, we've got one of our colleagues who created a um, tree of achievement. So it was for not just for work, for, to celebrate ta-da list moments. So instead of having a to-do list, your ta-da list is what did we achieve? What did we get done yesterday? So you start with the things you've achieved before you get on to what else, what next. Um, but also personal achievements and team achievements as them as individuals and people where they were challenging themselves. So the, the, the cog piece really took off. And the next slide, please. 
We got it onto the deduction. So I started doing a drawing work session right from the get go when staff joined us, asking them what do they feel they need to be at their best? What are they looking for from each other to be at their best? And encouraging them to use that and get involved right from the start. Really simple missions. So hello, my name is, is a great opportunity and example of the small things that can make a big difference. And we give them some to start with and encourage them to share others with us. Next slide, please. So I then moved from my frontline work and I'd been on secondment with he and I stepped up in the pandemic to um, become the regional head of AHPs for Health Education England in the southwest, which meant I immediately moved from a position where I didn't really have an office space. I worked all over in four different hospitals and in the community and was out and about with people to working in my spare room. As you can see, I borrowed my son's little white IKEA desk to start with. My spare room was also, I live in Cornwall, was the surfboard and um, wetsuit space in the summer, so they were easy access. And um, this was us at the Friday um, fancy dress meeting to give us a bit of injection of joy at the end of the week. And I worked like that for about 12 weeks and it was not joyful. So I went back to my roots in the August when I knew I was going to be staying on for a longer term and thought, right, what do I need to do? And so I thought about what my frustrations were, what wasn't giving me joy, flipped them over and took some really small but important actions to improve my um, work environment at home. Went on pre-love, got myself a £10 desk, big old desk, good job, I had a big room. I didn't realise how big it was when I bought it. Um, set up my little uh, celebration connectivity with team, all the little awards and cards and things that people had given me. So I felt connected to people, even though we were apart. Got myself some greenery, decent chair because I had backache from sitting on a, a dining room chair for the last 12 weeks. Were the little things that made the big things and I shared it. And in this particular instance, I wrote a blog post for 15S 30M about the importance of joy in home working and the little things that make a big difference. Next slide, please. So with all these missions and all these ideas coming in, having somewhere to take them and share them is important. So a couple of years on the trot, I've done joyful January calendars that were shared in the trust and I've shared on social media. And these were taken from what are the small things that people shared as missions to improve their joy at work and at home um, and to encourage people at that time of year when we're hitting the new year to have a good start to the year in a joyful January sense. Really easy and a great way to repurpose and reconnect and, and bring joy and work to more people at scale. Next slide, please. So what do I know? So times are changing and we all know and people in the Q community are all over this around, you know, we want to see distributed leadership. We want to empower people. Change starts anywhere. Change starts from where you are and what you experience. It's an organic living thing. It's around collaboration. It's about being inclusive. Um, and this is what joy and work does. It, it, it can't be a must do. It has to be a can do and it has to be something that attracts people towards it. 15S30M is a QI tool that we can all use, is available to anyone and everyone and turns frustration into positive actions. Next slide, please. What you will find is very quickly you draw out and unveil your two percenters. So these are your superheroes that are at large in your workforce. So Andy Cope and the Art of Brilliance, this is one of his um, sketch note one pages. And that's the idea being that about 2% of the people fall into the category of feeling consistently great. And they stand out a mile. They're en enthusiastic, optimistic, energetic and have that can do mentality. And when you draw them out, it's very easy then to see how they glitter and sparkle and for other people to want to get involved or be, you know, they're brilliant role models that other people follow suit and think, aha, I want to be more like them. Do I want to join the mood hoovers over here or do I want to join the two percenters over here? And they generally want to come in the direction of the two percenters. So it's a great way of finding out who are those informal leaders and, you know, change agents for positive action in your workplace. Next slide, please. 
So joy in work enables our staff to become the resource to make change happen. And really often the best way to get started and succeed big is to go small. So it's the small things that make a big difference. We all know and we often see and when I would share this um, slide with people in the joy at work, there was a lot of, you know, it create a lot of energy and heat and head nodding that um, and this is no disrespect to, the, to our managers and leaders, but we need to put the power of change on the front line and enable our staff to get involved in what makes for better days, what they think they can do better and how they can do it and give them the time and space and the skills and the training where necessary to be able to deliver on that, that, that enables them to have a much more fulfilling role um, to, to do the things that they believe will make a difference. And what you find is, is where people are enjoying their work, their discretionary effort and commitment goes up. So they are more likely not only to do it now, but they're more likely to get involved and help you tackle other things. Often it may be you know more make more sense to start with the things that are important to them first before you start coming in with some of the bigger and wicked issues that you might want to achieve next slide please so where next so sustainability is obviously a massive piece at the moment and is on the up um, and I think there's loads, joy and work, especially the 15S30, and we had loads of missions that were around repurposing, reusing, reducing waste. There's lots of things that people could do, and it was important to staff that they wanted to become more sustainable. They thought there was lots of waste in the NHS that they didn't like, they weren't happy with. So I would encourage you, if you were looking for areas which interest and are important to people, that the sustainability agenda may be a way in where you may get engagement and people will be interested to come and have a conversation worth having. Next slide, please. So my top tips for joy in work is engage in the conversations worth having and start with what is important and meaningful to staff. Often when we were looking at things, the ideas that we were coming up with as a senior team we're just not going to hit the mark and we're just totally on a different level to what staff really wanted and was going to make a difference. And actually, a lot of it is just about doing things differently. They weren't asking for more money and you're not offering them, you know, uh, everyone wants more staff. This isn't about this is about what can we do with what's available to us now that will make a difference to your working days. Start with people, not the problems makes a huge difference and we know that around our health and well-being, our workforce retention. Um, if we, we need to, to bring and see people and bring out the best of people in work and they will be able to cope and deal and tackle the problems. I've put get your gits out on here. So this is another really important one that I, that I came across and used in the Joy and Work sessions is that sometimes people would come but they would be not really sure and they'd say oh it's never going to work this is just a waste of time you know oh it sounds you know it's nice to dream big but how do you make dreams a reality so i say great right we used to have orange post-it notes they were the, your goal inhibiting thoughts and i'd say if you've got any gits put your gits on the paper because we need to get your gits out and we need to see them and we need to acknowledge them because this is not about putting rose tinted glasses on. We have to be real and acknowledge the reality, but move forward. So we need to work through those goal inhibiting thoughts to take you forward in a way that's important to you. Talked about learning how to flip, how to turn and use appreciative inquiry to turn frustration and moaning into positive actions. Thinking about the type of questions you ask, and the feedback you get creates energy. There would be lots of energy and enthusiasm and fizz that would come out of joy and work sessions, but you want to then capture that and harness it into, and now what? So what, what are you actually gonna do? You want commitment from them, a what by when? What are you gonna do when you're gonna do it? Hold the space open to empower individuals and teams to identify those meaningful actions, but then hold them to account for doing it and celebrate their success when they do so and focus on improvement over fixing. Lots of people would jump straight to trying to fix things and they and they would go, we can't do it because we're not gonna be able to fix it. And say, well, let's not focus on fixing. Let's just do something that will make it feel better for you in what you're doing or a step up that ladder. 
and be generous. So if you are taking actions or you see people taking actions, throw it wide, amplify it and celebrate and appreciate what is going on. Like glitter, you will soon find that joy will get everywhere and you will notice it sparkling in places you expected and places you didn't. Next slide, please. So what is the next smallest action that you choose to take? So my advice would be be the light, find your inner elf and uh, and get out there. You will soon find who your other superheroes are and the two percenters. Seek out those with the energy and drive that want to make a difference. You will soon see where other people connect and align with your desire to want to focus on joy and work and use positivity as a resource to drive change and action. And as with 15S 30M, people like to be recognised and appreciated that they are doing it and they're learning. So the COGS were a really great way of taking actions forward. So I think that's it from me. I've got a final kind of slide for you to think about as you uh, as we go on from here today or a couple of slides. So um, next slide, please, Julia. So thinking about some of the things that I've touched on, the ways that um, the strategies and techniques I've used, if there's one thing that you have learned and take away a result from today's session, um, please do feel um, free to share your thoughts in the chat box before you head out today, uh, because sometimes it's that sharing that small action that can encourage others and think, oh yeah, I could do that too. I'm going to that's, I'm going to pinch with pride that one, or if you're going to do that, I could do this. And again, it helps generate that energy to move forwards. Next slide, please. So lots of focus gets put on joy at Christmas, so I'm always keen to get out and spread the joy. But it is important to think that joy isn't just about Christmas. It can be all year through and it is about what you give and what you take. It is up to you to decide about what's important to you in being joyful and sharing it with others. So thank you for your time. I'm just reading through some of the comments that have come through because it's great to see and interested to see what has landed with people today. Yeah, room 101, it really, people understand that concept. It's a really straightforward one. Yes, the uh, sumo event response outcome, really straightforward. Transform my marriage, in fact, that little equation <laughs> in how I chose to respond. Lots of personal growth through sumo. Appreciation five times a day. Do you know what? If you've, at first, it feels quite hard, but you'll soon realise it's everywhere. It's about noticing. See it, say it, share it. To do lists and to da lists, yeah. Yeah, joyful January, joyful June. There's two J's in the year. You can find ways to pull them through. Thank you. I'm happy if anyone wants to ask any questions or share any thoughts. It would be lovely to hear from people. If you have any yeah. questions, do just put your hand up or just speak. I'm sure someone will have a question. Morning. Hi, hey guys. Hi. Hi. I was really sorry I got on late. Um, apologies. I didn't have a Christmas hat as well, but it brought me elf. Hey. <laughs> I saw your elf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, um, matches ginger beard. Um, just asking about joyful January. Uh, the calendars that you had for that. Uh, did you make those up yourself, or did? Yeah, yeah. You just you just pulled it together on your own. I literally, I just used missions. So when we did the 15S 30M, uh, we were, were the, one of the first organisations to do it outside of the host organisation that, that started it. So Dan Wadsworth and Rachel Pilling at the time at Bradford started it. And they set me a challenge. They set me 100 missions in 100 days challenge as a kickstart. And everyone loves a little competition, don't they? So it took us a bit longer. It took us 140 days to get 100 missions. But we had all these missions then. So we were, I was really finding ways to share them and I thought I know what we can do we should do we should just create a calendar so I've done a couple of different ones and just put different things in them to share with people I mean I can 
at the moment, I mean, this one's on here, but it was literally just a PowerPoint template. I've got a calendar template and put them in to share with people. I think it's great you took it from folk. I think I would be more meaningful if you shared it back to them in, in the calendar format. So that's a really good idea. Thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. And again, it was one of those things, being a one pager, people could just print it out and put it up in their office. So you could see how people were using it and then they were sharing it and what they were doing. So um, yes, yeah, simple, but a great way of, of spreading it. Thank you, that's great. Have we got any further questions? It's a great opportunity while we've got Carrie here to ask her anything. It's Anne here from, from Belfast. Can you hear me okay? Yes, hi yes. Anne. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering what, whenever we talk about joy and work, I suppose in my teams there's always a collective groan around that terminology. Is there any catchy terminology that you, you like to use or do, have you got it to a place where joy and work is a good work? For, for us, it's certainly my team's very much, oh, here we go, you know, so I'm just wondering what terminology you like or what works well. So I think, um, so for some people, it's more important to focus on what's important, what's important, meaningful to you. And I know that that's almost like a piece in itself. I remember when Helen Bevan did the um, QI Olympics earlier in the year, that was one of the top three pieces and it sits in that bracket so if if joy feels a bit twee for people and they just it makes them cringe then i would go in the, it, it that's what it's about what's important what's meaningful for you and and how do you want to bring your best self to work really for some that's that's more meaningful thank you so that, I think, left, sorry i was just going to um uh, just mention something here about that just share my own experience as you know I talk a lot about joint work and I have a picture of a little girl who's rolling her eyes or sort of say what and it's just it's as I say to them I know you don't you probably don't like the terminology uh, but and then talk about the underpinning methodology which sits under it so that that's another approach or just change it to enjoying work I think East London call it enjoying work uh, so that yeah there's lots of different plays on words you could maybe do sorry Carrie I just thought I'd share that um Bonnie hi thank you um yeah I just wanted to ask around um I think it, uh, using the appreciative inquiry method around or the room 101 around what doesn't work and and trying to take the positive out of there um my only concern or, or, or tips I'm looking for around when people kind of get in that negative mindset, how to kind of turn them around, what 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 would you advise? So there was a couple of, so I use the whinge pit a lot. So I say, okay, it looks like we're in the whinge pit. So you've got five minutes, you've got five minutes to whinge, and then I'm going to throw you a rope and then you're going to climb out and you, you've got to tell me the actions it is to climb out so that you move on. And I always think about, um, I can't think what the film is now, there's the big giraffe in Madagascar when he goes to the dying holes and he just sits, stands in the dying hole waiting. It's like sometimes people are waiting to be rescued out of the place they're in and you have to make them appreciate that it, they need to rescue themselves, they need to do the work to get themselves forward. It is very much about not handing it over to you and you're going to fix it. You're not going to fix it for them. They have to be empowered. So it's really, and I really draw on it. I say, tell me, tell me how bad it is. Tell me. And then I want you to describe the absolute opposite. That's one side of the coin. If we flip it over, tell me the complete opposite of everything you've just described and what that looks like. And then we say, OK, if that's at number 10 and you're down here at zero because you're at the other end of the scale, What's going to get you to step number one? What is the one thing you're going to do that's going to put you in the right direction of travel to get to that destination you want to get to? So you're not asking them to get to 10, you're asking them to get to one. So it's again that piece on focus on improvement, not fixing. Great. Thank you. Oh, you're on mute, Julia. I am. I always do that. Um, if there's any other questions, please do put your hands up. And also, uh, Kate Hilton has put a question in the chat box for you, Carrie, about speaker opportunities. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm you... very happy. I'm, I'm 
always happy to come and spread joy. So um, yes, very happy to engage and, and support. And also to signpost you, there are lots of people out there that are brilliant joy spreaders, that are elves in action or superheroes doing their bit. So, um, and again, you may not know that they're out there. So uh, very happy to connect and let you know who who are, who might be out there in that space that's close to home or happy to, to get involved. Lovely. And are there any any further questions? No. Well, I would just like to um, show my appreciation to Carrie because I do have to say I have taken lots of tips away, and I've been involved in joint work for ages. So there's loads of new stuff in there which I I didn't know, and different tips and 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 tricks which uh, we can we could try so that's absolutely fantastic so i just want to say on behalf of everybody here today i'm sure i'm not alone in and um, thinking that this has been an incredibly um well spent one hour over lunchtime so um and also thank you to everybody who's taken the time to come to join us today. I know things are really hard at the minute in terms of trying to take time out. So I do hope that you you feel that it's been a benefit. I, I'm sure that you do. And uh, just a huge thank you again, Carrie, for your time today. We are recording this. And one thing I'm quite keen to do is listen back to the recording because I'm sure there's things I've missed as well. So that's brilliant. So we will share that recording with you once we once we get that sorted. And um, yes, uh, just thank you, everybody. And in the in the spirit of Christmas, um, I hope you all have a, a wonderful Christmas and New Year and come back in the New Year feeling um fully refreshed and and joyful and Carrie do you have any final words you would like to add just to say thank you for coming today um I'm really happy for anyone to connect we'll make sure I, my details are available and I'm on the SIG group as well so happy to connect with the SIG um we will give you the slides too there's a couple of additional sketch notes on the end around joint work and appreciative inquiry um from Sonia Sparkles that I've added on the end of the slide pack too so um yeah have a lovely Christmas and um all the best for 2022 thank you everyone <laughs>